So you think you know OBS? Well, it's changing fast, so there could be some little hidden gems that you aren't even aware of. Hey, you can't know everything. That's why I'm here, to find those cool little things that you didn't have time to figure out. So today I have five hidden features from the new OBS. Oh, and by the way, there is a bonus for those working with an older machine. So you probably want to stick around and see that. Hello, my YouTube friends. Let's get right into these five hidden features, starting with one that anyone who has been using OBS for a while is going to appreciate. Now, I'll be the first one to admit that OBS looks cluttered and confusing, especially when you first start using it. But when you use it for a while, you get used to it and it feels like everything is just where it should be. So when I put OBS 28 in there for the first time and got the new UI look, I was like, what the hell is this? Let's just say it's not my thing. Well, luckily it's not that hard to set it back to its original confusing glory. Just go into settings. On the general tab, you have a theme dropdown. The new default theme for OBS 28 going forward is Yammy. But if you drop this list down and select dark, all is right with the world again. It returns the UI to exactly what you've grown to love. This next one is an example of how OBS is taking great plugins and building them right into OBS. Win Audio Capture is one of those tools. Now it's a bit more basic than the plugin, which you can still download and use if you want, but for most people, the built-in one is gonna get the job done. So if we click under sources, we see the application audio capture beta. Click that and you can name your source. Then under Window, select the executable for the program that you want to grab audio from. Under Window Match Priority, you're going to select the appropriate one. Now which one is best depends on the application that you're grabbing. Some audio applications are going to change the window name over time to reflect the artist or the song that's playing, while others, like a game, is never going to change. I find that Match Title Otherwise Find a Window of the Same Type works pretty much for everything, but just know that you can change this if something doesn't work right. Now we can just click Play on Spotify and we can use the audio that's coming in for our scene. How is that for cool and easy? The next one is one that everyone uses, but you never even really think about it. The WebSocket used to be a plugin that you had to install, and then once you did, it just works and you really never thought about it again. It's a tool that adds all kinds of cool functionality to OBS and makes using Stream Deck and Touch Portal possible. Now it's totally built in for the new OBS and it looks a bit different. It also has a really cool feature I bet you didn't know about. Lots of people want a remote producer or maybe even someone in their house to help with their streaming duties. Well, with the new WebSocket, you can go to this page right here and put in your connection information and bam, you're connected to your OBS and the scenes can now be changed from anywhere. This will even work on a mobile phone. You can start and stop a stream, a recording, or even the virtual camera. It's a cool little tool that you should check out and see how you might be able to use it to make your stream easier. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. You know how I always say, if you wanna find success on YouTube, you have to create recorded content from your live streams. And then you say, yeah, sure, Mike. Like, like I have all the time in the world to sift through hours of live streaming footage to get clips for a couple of five minute video. I know, it's a pain, I get that. Now in the past, I've talked about different apps and plugins to help make this a lot easier. But the third hidden gem I wanna show you is truly the easiest way. It's just a simple button press to have all the clips that you really want. It's so easy that anyone could do it. First, go into settings and go into the output tab. Make sure the output mode is set to advanced, now select the recording tab. Now set up your recorder settings and your encoder settings so the files are where you want to go and the recordings look good. I have a couple of videos on the proper settings. I'll link those at the end of the video if you want to check it out to be sure. Now let's select the replay buffer tab. Click enable the replay buffer. Here you want to set how long of a clip that you want to save out. If you're just taking kill clips, it can be pretty short. If you're doing something longer, then you might want to adjust this up. Below that, 
percent is the maximum memory. Now this should be about the size of the largest clip that you may create. Now you can easily test this by setting up the record tab and then bringing up an active scene and clicking the record button for the length of time that you plan to need. Then you just go into File Explorer and see what the size of the file is. And then you go according to that and maybe make it slightly bigger just in case. Now you see a Start Replay Buffer button down here in the controls. Now you can click on that to start your replay buffer or you can go into settings again and click the automatically start replay buffer when streaming in the general tab under output. Now it's gonna start automatically when you're streaming so you don't even have to think about it. Now all we need to do is set up a button to press to save our replay out. So go to the hotkeys tab and find the replay buffer and set it to a hotkey for saving the replay. Now all you have to do is press that hotkey and your clip is saved. And you can also set this up easily for your Elgato stream deck if you have one. And then when your stream is over, you go into the folder you set up and all your clips are right there. Now this next one is super simple, but for anyone using OBS to record who only has one monitor, it's gonna be a huge thing. This is what it usually looks like when you're capturing that one display to record a game or something. It's really disorienting. But if we go into settings on the general tab and in the general area, we can click on the hide the OBS window from screen capture. When we click that and we click apply, we see exactly what we want whatever's under the OBS window. This makes it so much easier to configure scenes and set everything up. All we have to do now is click record or go live and switch to the application that you want and you're on your way. No more pesky Inception OBS. Now let me throw a bonus one at you cause everybody loves a bonus. How many of you folks out there are using laptops or older computers to run your live streams? Let me know in the comments, but I know it's a lot of you because I see the questions that you ask. Hey, it's okay, we all start somewhere and most of us don't have a rich uncle who can't wait to finance our streaming dream. Luckily, OBS is a well-designed light platform that is easy for older equipment to use. But there are folks out there who maybe aren't awesome at getting the most out of their equipment. There is a simple setting in OBS that dials up the priority so other things running on the computer are less likely to cause problems. Go into settings and select advanced. At the top under general, you can change your process priority. Now the normal is default, but if you find other apps affecting your streaming, why not jack this up a little bit? Now I would start with above normal and see how it goes before really jacking it up, but this should help resolve potential encoding issues that you may have on a weaker machine. Now I'll bet you didn't know that one, or maybe you did. Let me know in the comments how many of these things you actually knew. And if you wanna see what the proper recording settings are for your replay buffer, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.